Welcome to another video guys. So today's video is based on a comment that I actually got in a form of a question and this and this question reads as follows. How do you go about doing fundamental analysis for commodities like oil, silver, etc. And of course me being me, I wasn't going to give the answer straight up because I, I, I really like probing the person to actually come up with the answer themselves. So I wasn't going to give them the answer directly. And I also believe that if you ask the right questions, you get the right answers. And also if you change the way you think about things, it changes how you see things, right? So my response to that question was essentially by understanding what commodities are in the first place. So that was my response. That was the answer I could give to that question. And then later on, the, the, the gentleman actually commented and said supply and demand with a question mark. So right there, he had already given himself the answer. I did not give him the answer, but I probed him to think firstly, because remember what I said, if you change how you think about something, you cha it changes how you see something or how you view something. And by me actually probing him to think, he actually came up with, came up with the answer himself, right? So it's something that is very important when, especially when it comes to the financial markets, because remember, we're not just trading uh, asset classes that just fall off, that just fall from the sky. There is some sort of value, some sort of background for whatever asset class that we trade, whether it's Forex, Forex, predominantly central banks, predominantly interest rates. When it comes to commodities, it's more driven by supply and demand. And that is what we're going to get into in this video in terms of breaking down supply and demand. But firstly, let me just shift um, my, 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 my face to the bottom left where it generally is. And then we get started with today's lesson, right? So essentially we're focusing on commodities, right? So commodities are driven by supply and demand, right? So that is the key thing. That is the key thing that we need to understand when it comes to commodities. And then if we now understand that commodities are driven by supply and demand, uh, driven by supply and I'm now writing by driven again, demand, right? So if we have that understanding, okay, let's change color. So if we have that understanding, we can now approach the markets with a sober mind because the next question would be, because remember I said, if you ask the right questions, you get the right answers. So now the next question would be, what factors affect the supply and demand? What factors disrupt the supply and demand? Because that will give us an idea of whether we should be looking to buy gold or sell gold, if whether we should be looking to buy oil or sell oil, right? So that would be the next question, right? In terms of now understanding what actually affects the supply and demand of these commodities. But before we get there, let us break down because these two different commodities that we'll be focusing on today, which is essentially oil and gold, they are actually driven by different forces, right? In as much as they're both driven by, uh, by supply and demand, but they are driven by different forces. Okay, so let me redo this one here. Yeah, so we're going to start off with oil, right? So it's important to understand. Let's do this, make it medium. Okay, we're going to do oil. Right, so change the color. Let's make it white. So we're going to do oil. And an important thing to remember when it comes to oil it's the fact that it is regulate, not, I wouldn't say regulated, but essentially to, let's use regulated. Uh, it is regulated by OPEC, right? So OPEC is essentially an organization of petroleum exporting countries. Okay. Let me write it out, even though it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a long thing, but let me write it out. Uh, so it's an organization, right? So it's an organization of oil sorry not of oil of petroleum petroleum so petroleum exporting countries exporting countries and the reason why I'm actually writing it out is because there's a clue for you guys there to understand what actually drives the supply and demand of oil right so if you say that an organization that is responsible 
for regulating the price of oil essentially or affecting the supply and demand of oil because remember the price is driven by supply and demand when it comes to commodities we have opec right and opec it's an organization of petroleum exporting countries the key word there is petroleum right so it has something to do with petrol it has something to do with gasoline right so which means that another factor that drives the supply or demand of oil is gasoline or the sub or the demand of gasoline so essentially what that means is if an economy is very active an economy is growing and there's a lot of movement in that economy there's a lot of growth there's a high demand of goods and services in that economy then it requires what an added demand of petroleum or an added demand of gasoline right what what do i mean by that to, to transport goods because of there's a high demand then all those goods need to be transported from one from one location to the next and that of course we understand that when it comes to transportation predominantly in as much as yes we do have electric cars now but then predominantly there's gasoline involved there's petrol involved right so it means that that will affect the demand of oil so also growth of an economy or growth of economies if there's a global slowdown that that is expected but like we like it is expected in 2024 because economies have been experiencing very high interest rates and then now it is it is it is essentially pinching the purchasing power of consumers or it has minimized the disposable income of consumers so that means that the demand for goods and services should also drop and then of course that means that the demand of oil will also drop or the demand of gasoline will also drop right so all of those things are projecting a slowdown in the in, in in the global economy essentially right so that is what that is what will also what affect oil prices which means that oil prices should be expected to go lower but then for opec since last year they have actually reduced their output by output i mean the supply of oil so a million these guys supply a million barrels of oil per day but they actually reduced the output of oil right so which means that if they reduce the output which is the supply of oil because remember whenever supply is high or supply is greater than demand prices go lower but if we now strip off the supply or reduce the supply and we of course we're not gonna drop the demand but if we minimize the supply then that will result in prices slightly pushing higher right so that is what they were doing essentially right since last year right so with that in mind then we understand that okay it means that oil prices should slightly stabilize they're not going to push higher because there's a global growth slowdown that is expected but we should expect them to slightly push higher right based on the actual scope of things so another thing to also take note of when it comes to this is the fact that also we look at the war right so something like war right especially middle east especially in the middle east right because a lot of oil a lot of oil um, business goes down there in the middle east especially with iran right so if iran gets involved it's gonna escalate what it's gonna escalate the whole middle east war or the middle east tensions and that will obviously impact the oil side or the oil supply side of things that's something to take note of because remember i said once you understand that commodities are driven by supply and demand the next question or your primary focus to find fundamentals that you can use for commodities is now drilling down to things that will affect supply or demand once you once you get you you actually get focused on that and you nail that then it will be easier for you to project or to have a forecast of what you're expecting for the price of oil what you're expecting for the price of gold based on those certain things so in this case the war especially in the middle east with tensions rising that is going to do it that is also going to strip off further the supply that had already been stripped off by opec right so which means that it's also affecting supply which should also also stabilize the oil price or slightly push the oil price higher right and then of course we had what we had also the red sea so let's do this so red sea red sea uh disruptions red sea uh yeah let's say red sea disruptions right because remember we had the houthis in yemen actually start 
attacking ships, hijacking ships or, or, or commercial vessels like big cargo vessels. And all of that is doing what it's disrupting the supply side of things. And also oil carriers uh, or big, uh, big commercial vessels that carry oil can no longer use the Red Sea as a passage to deliver the oil, right? That is needed in whatever uh, destination that they're delivering it to. What is that also doing? It is affecting the supply. And that is why we need to pay attention to news or, or, or to commodity news, especially, like I said, with the war, we need to pay attention to the disruption or, or to the escalation of the Middle East war. And as we can see currently, what is happening is that the war is escalating. So that means that it will further cause a disruption, right? There have been more ships that have been attacked by by Houthi missiles. Even in the in, yesterday, yesterday, not even I'm not even talking about something that from weeks back. Even yesterday, you know. So it is something that affects the oil price, and that is why I've been looking to buy oil since the war broke out in October 2023. And that was my reasoning behind looking to buy oil because I understood that what is currently happening is going to have an effect on the actual supply side of oil. And since it's going to have an effect on the supply side of oil, then that should that will prompt me to do what to actually look to buy oil. So that is what we have there on the fundamental side of things when it comes to oil, right? And then now we're going to move over and look at gold because gold is also another component of the commodities of course i won't go into silver i'll just go into gold and touch more on gold so now we have gold right and then when it comes to gold we need to now understand what affects the supply and demand of gold right but first thing to understand is that gold is used used as a storage of value, right? So unlike oil, where gold where where oil prices almost said gold prices where oil prices are actually uh, moderated or or regulated by OPEC. When it comes to gold, there's no one really moderating the price of gold because gold is used as a storage of value, right? So gold is used as a storage of value. So let us change the font here. So gold is used as a storage of value. So it's a safe haven asset, right? safe haven asset so what does that mean if we say that it is a safe haven asset so in in moments of uncertainty like we are having because of the war that is going on it means that gold will be more attractive because it will be see because it is used as a storage of value during times of uncertainty let me say let me let me storage of value uh, during times of uncertainty so gold is used as a storage of value during times of uncertainty because gold sorry gold is a safe haven asset right so that's also the first thing and also gold is used because gold is a good storage of value, which means that it does not lose value like money, it is also used, gold used as a hedge against high inflation. Because remember, when inflation is high, it erodes the purchasing power of money, paper money. But for gold, gold is not affected by inflation. So gold is then used as a hedge against high inflation. So whenever there's high inflation, capital will flow into gold, right? Why? As a storage of value for the money, then investors will shift their capital from money to gold or from cash to gold to store value of the money. And then in, in, in that case, it is used as a hedge against what against high inflation so now i've given you two scenarios or situations that affect the supply and demand of gold of gold sorry 
during times of uncertainty like we have with the war then it means that the sub the, the demand of gold will go higher because it is used as a storage of value because there's a there's a lot of uncertainty that is that is happening that is going on with the whole war no one knows when it will when it will end no one knows how further it will spread because it only started with israel and hamas now there's there's an involvement of pakistan we have lebanon we have we have uh, the houthis we have the us we have the uk you know they have now iraq so there's a now it is escalating and broadening broadening even further so that is creating more what more uncertainty and that is making gold even more attractive at this point right and then the second thing is it is used as a hedge against high inflation so if there's a high inflationary environment then it is used as a hedge but also something to also remember because now with the second point there you might ask me but in 2022 gold did not appreciate as much as you would expect it to because inflation was quite high around the ranges of nine percent in the u.s remember that gold is quoted uh it is quoted against the usd as xau usd right so what does that mean that means that if the dollar is strong or appreciating in value it's gonna add bearish pressure on gold especially in the situation that we were in in 2022 when interest rates start going higher because remember what i said gold is used as a storage of value so it does not lose value like money right so it's quickly like we see like we see with money but at the same time that means that gold does not give you an interest payment there is no yield on gold but on the united states dollar there is an interest payment especially if interest rates keep going up going up for the dollar so which is why during the the, the period of 2022 2023 we saw we didn't see that much of a rally higher in gold even though inflation was high why because the united states dollar was getting more and more attractive because interest rates were going higher so investors instead of putting their money on gold and parking their money on gold because essentially view it that way that they just parking the money on gold as a storage of value or ma maintaining or preserving their their profits or their capital we have on the other end we have the dollar which is increasing interest rates which means that it is increasing its yield that means that now the dollar is more attractive than gold because the dollar is paying you a higher interest right of holding it but for gold you won't get any interest in as much as it will store the value of your capital but you won't be getting a return on it as much as you would with the interest payment you'll be getting from the dollar so that is why during those periods whenever the dollar is strengthening you do it applies bearish pressure on gold even though the environment might favor gold to rally because we are in it we, we are actually in times of uncertainty or there's high inflation but if the dollar has higher interest and it's more attractive then that will add bearish pressure on gold and also remember the dollar is also a safe haven currency right so when it comes to gold those are the three predominantly important things to take note of right this remember it's a storage of value so what will affect the supply and demand of gold it is times of uncertainty or risk off environments whenever there's high inflation whenever there's weakness of the dollar if there's weakness of the dollar then you'll see higher prices of gold right because remember i said gold uh, the dollar is also used as a safe haven asset so if the dollar is failing and it's getting weaker then mon money will actually shift to who to the guy or to the asset that actually preserves value or that is used as a storage of value and that is gold so in those times so now when it comes to gold you need to pay attention to those three things for you to now have an understanding of the direction of gold so based on what i've explained here it gives us a, a or it concludes to us and like i said guys this is not everything that 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 drives gold and of course you can also look at countries that actually uh, export gold right uh, how are they doing countries that actually import gold right what are the levels of import what are the level of levels of export but all of those things now give you give you an understanding that unlike currencies where where we focus more on interest rates when it comes to commodities the key thing it is the supply and the demand side of things supply and demand is what drives commodities right so that is why 
when it comes to uh when it comes to oil i've been looking to buy oil since last year october like i said when the when the whole uh, hamas uh israel war broke out right and if we go on to the weekly we can see that it actually the egg prices actually dropped until they bottomed out around december as you can see here and then they've been going up since so that's another very very fundamental and key thing about about uh, about or the, or the nice thing or the beneficial thing about using fundamentals or having this understanding that to actually prepare ahead of time right so this was around october towards the this was around the end of october right i've been looking to buy oil but oil has been falling and then eventually it bottomed out around december and then it has been it has started pushing higher right and obviously if you wanna if you've looked at, if you've watched my technical analysis video we can just quickly look at the level that it came to it came to a demand level on the three day time frame right as you can see this is the demand level that we have here uh, this this because it's followed by a bullish engulfing candle it actually bottomed out there and then it pushed higher and then it came back it pulled back again into another three day uh it is this level here this three day uh demand zone that we have here so this one i think it's more visible on the two day oh no it is or it is on the three day that it's more visible on so yeah yeah this one here as you can see this is a bearish candle followed by a bullish engulfing candle so right there as you can see so these were all opportunities of scaling and buying entries and then of course i caught this third opportunity that we had here but the reason for me looking to buy oil since i've been doing videos from uh, i think i posted on tiktok as well on other social media platforms but this is how this is where i was getting my idea of looking to buy oil because of the war of the war that was happening in the middle east that is the primary reason why because i knew it would affect supply and then when november hit and then that because that is when the the, the houthi started uh attacking uh commercial vessels in the red sea it was in november when that happened i knew okay that's definitely gonna cause what oil prices to go higher right so this this is the thinking process when it comes to commodities this is how you approach commodities right even with gold i am looking to buy gold right now but i'm gonna show you as well how gold actually re reacted uh, xaususd how gold actually reacted right so you see this bottoming out here on gold excuse me this bottoming out here on gold this was in in october right the beginning of october this was immediately after we had the break out of of, of 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 the incident where hamas actually came into israel they killed i think a thousand more than a thousand people in israel and then the war obviously broke out from there and then gold prices were going higher why like i explained because there was a lot of uncertainty and then investors were parking their money in gold because they were because it was they were yeah there was a lot of uncertainty about the future and of course we had this what we had this uh demand on the on the weekly time frame as you can see here this demand on the weekly time frame that price actually dropped back into and then started pushing higher and right now we are in i i am waiting for price to possibly come back to this two day time frame because i haven't switched my bias on looking to buy gold in as much as i understand that any 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 bullish any bullish data for the dollar can apply bearish pressure on gold but i understand that eventually the fed will have to cut interest rate this year and that will cause gold to actually rally very hard especially if the war will still be persistent at that time or escalating even further right so i am now waiting for gold to pull back to 19,982 and then i'll be looking for buying opportunities there but i hope it makes sense guys and you are able to understand that for you to actually be effective at trading commodities 
you have to understand that commodities are driven by supply and demand so if you have an understanding of supply or what affects supply of oil what affects supply of gold then you'll be able to make the right decisions and trade it based on that and then when it comes to the technical analysis side it's easy everything guys like i always say it starts with the fundamental bias you need to know your fundamental story and then your technical analysis is just for entry like i've showed you guys it's just a filter to see where am i looking to buy because fundamentally i'm looking to buy okay where am i looking to buy on the chart where is the lower price that i can buy it because remember we buy low we sell high vice versa if you're looking to sell right where is it a higher price where i can sell at but predominantly commodities understand that they are driven by supply and demand and your questions should always be what is currently affecting supply or demand of oil what is currently affecting supply and demand of gold right and like i said this is not the only things but this is just to prop your mind or probe your mind to actually start running or thinking in a certain way when it comes to approaching fundamentals when it comes to approaching commodities right so i hope you find value on uh, from this video and as always guys don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like the video if you found value from this video and of course you can feel free to share the video as well and turn on the notification notification bells so that you can be notified whenever i upload another video guys and just let me know in the comments what you thought about the video uh, and if you found value from it or even me if maybe there's something that i missed in terms of uh factors that affect supply and demand of oil or supply and demand of gold let me know in the comments below as well right so until the next video cheers guys